fabulous freshman guards. Dennis Smith, Smith may be the most explosive and dynamic coming off a triple-double. The first triple-double in ACC history by a freshman against another ACC team. And North Carolina's strength is in their interior, but the engine of the team is Joel Berry II, who is coming off a fabulous game where he had 31 points against Clemson in an overtime game. Without Joel Berry hitting seven threes, North Carolina goes 0-2 in the lead. Underway, expect a lot of scoring today. The sun is shining, 17 hours later than scheduled. Finally tipping it off here at Chapel Hill. And great to have you with us. Smith from the corner immediately with a misfire. And Carolina's mix comes away with a rebound. Well, out of the gate, North Carolina man-to-man. -man. Joel Berry was guarding Dennis Smith. And you're going to see a couple of different players on Smith depending on how it goes. But Joel Berry can't stay on him for 40 minutes. He's very deep from the wing at three. The Tar Heels only all-time series against the Wolfpack, 153 to 77, and have won 19 of the last 21. It'll be really important for North Carolina State to hang with North Carolina on the glass. This is a great rebounding team. Abu rounded out the 6'8 junior from Boston, and a terrific rebounder. And of course, the Tar Heels, one of the great rebounding teams in the country. Especially, Dave, on the offensive end. Their weak side rebounding on the offensive end is spectacular. A top shot there by Hicks going here on the 6'9 senior. And North Carolina pretty patient to start off the game. Moving the ball, and Isaiah Hicks just got his jersey retired on Wednesday at his high school in Oxford, North Carolina. Big fight for the rebound, and over the back, a foul against NC State. Now you look at the paint domination for North Carolina. You talked about the offensive glass, how tough they are. It's really remarkable, especially from the weak side. They get 42% of their own misses, and it's not like they miss all that often. But their ability to pound the glass and get second shots, the second shots they get are usually high percentage looks. Ritz have been picked up the foul, the seven-footer. Jackson went airborne. That one comes right to Berry. Comes in averaging 15 points a game. Meeks, gentle fall away, but that won't drop. So far, North Carolina State, their guards have done a really good job. That's the second rebound Torin Dorn has gotten. He's an excellent guard rebound. Smith trying to wriggle inside, got the pass free. Yurtsevin was not ready for it. Great job there by Williams to keep that one alive as he hit the deck hard. The only jerseys on the floor were white. Berry in for two. The six-foot junior, he was the man, as you said, in that win over Clemson this week. Scored 23 of his 31 in the second half of overtime. The pick by Williams. He goes in strong. A quick start here for the Tar Heels and a turnover. You know, Dave, North Carolina has gone on a little surge the last couple of seconds here. And I don't think it's any coincidence that Carolina was the team that was diving on the floor for that loose ball. Both Joel Berry and Kenny Williams diving head first for that ball. And that has really energized the Tar Heels, and they've made some hay out of it in the last two possessions. Berry way downtown. Rebound comes out high. Here comes Smith now, going one-on-one. -on -one. And a terrific job by Jackson, but a nice follow-up on the play. Torn Dorn has had a great start to this game. He's done all the tough things. A terrific rebounding guard. He averages over six rebounds per game. One of the only guards among the ACC leaders in rebounding. Jackson in and out. Smith there for the rebound. He can do that too. He gets four a game, but he's a great passer. He is averaging six assists per contest. Dorn going up high, and that one tipped up and in. Abu, the 6'8 junior for two. Well, he was right behind Isaiah Hicks, but Hicks didn't drive him back with that block out. He just jumped for that ball instead of driving him back. To be able to get some space to grab the defensive board. Great job by Kenny Williams to get out in the passing lane with that left arm, and that led to a, a great transition basket. Here's the tip in. Now you can see the block out, but Abu was able to push Isaiah Hicks under the basket instead of Hicks driving him back. He had good position to start, but wasn't strong enough to maintain that position. Or he is strong enough, he just didn't do it. Dennis Smith with his first foul, but Barry at the line, a tremendous foul shooter at 93%. He's made 40 out of 43 for the season. Roy Williams, Hall of Fame coach, has great numbers against a lot of foes, but against NC State, he's been near unbeatable. 30 and 3 all time. Well, since Roy Williams took the job, 
you know, Mark Gottfried has really elevated this North Carolina State program. It's a fair fight now. For a number of years, it wasn't a fair fight. And Mark Gottfried closing in on 400 career wins. Smith with the dribble. And the fallaway shot, a little too strong. Meeks again crashing the glass and got it free to Jackson. See, Smith can make that shot, but he took it without making a pass, so he's going against a set defense. And another foul against the Wolfpack, trying to slow down Joel Berry. And because, I think because of that shot, Dave, that was taken, that's a shot that Dennis Smith can make, but it wasn't a good shot. And all of a sudden, now NC State's defense isn't able to get back and get set, and that's one of the reasons he fouled Joel Berry. Then. Anderson with the foul. On top of the Williams, he's wide open for three. Now, both of these teams can really shoot it, and North Carolina's off to a hot start. Well, Kenny Williams only made one three-point shot last year in his freshman year. There's another steal. How about Meeks with the quick feet and hands? Goes in slow, he made it. He'll be at the line. Somehow able to keep his balance and bank that in while taking the hit. Well, Kenny Meeks has quick feet and gets a lot of steals. This is not unusual. What's unusual is the casual pass by Dennis Smith, and then Dennis Smith compounds the mistake by fouling here and allowing Kennedy Meeks to complete the play. Now all of a sudden Dennis Smith's in foul trouble. And that's a real issue for this North Carolina State team when your best player, your best scorer, your best assist guy has to go to the bench with 16 minutes to go in the first half. That's a real problem. And that was a freshman foul. No question. It's a freshman mistake and then a freshman foul to compound that mistake. So Smith averaging 20 points a game on the bench with 16 minutes to go in the first half and meets with a three-point play. Now one, of the, one of the mistakes that can be made all the time, especially by freshmen, Dennis Smith passed it to the offensive man instead of passing it away from the defense. You always have to be aware of where the defense is when you pass it. This with a quick pass there, barely got to a boo. Staying the corner's going. A little short, rebound free on the deck. Great hustle by Abu, kept it alive. Into the backboard, that's going to be a violation. So right. back over to Carolina goes. That's a violation, but a great play by Abu. That's the kind of hustle they need. Godfrey likes that, but he does not like the score. 14-4, to Carolina. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Austin. But they're not used to it here. They've handled it pretty well, I think. And we're finally playing basketball. Dave O'Brien and Jay Billis with it. And Smith on the bench right away. Yeah, 16 minutes to go in the first half. Dennis Smith has two fouls, zero points. And after he threw that ball away, Kennedy Meeks taking it the other way. The better part of Valor was not to foul there. And I don't know what it is about college basketball, but it seems like so many players, so many teams want to die on the hill on every possession. Instead of there, you can get a basket back. You cannot get a foul back. And you can't be wasteful of your fouls, especially when you're as important of a player to a team as Dennis Smith is to NC State. And the guy he fouled is 6'9", you know, about 240 pounds. So it did not make a lot of sense there. And Carolina with a 14-4 lead and the ball. And the jump shot from the wing will be off target by Williams, but he's already made one three. And now it's important for... Another freshman from Cleveland, Markel Johnson, to come into the game and do a good job running this team. Get the ball moving. Storm during the 6-5 sophomore from Charlotte. Johnson will lift. Another bad shot. I mean, he's taken under pressure without moving the defense. And these are all shots that NC State can make, but I wouldn't put him in the category of a good shot. He's on the baseline. Usually connects on that shot, but can't get that one to go. Pretty meets has been rebounding all year. He has been rebounding his tail off the last three games. Last two games, he's got 30 rebounds. Last three, 42. Great defense on the interior as Hicks rejected the shot. The box for Williams for two. What a beautiful fast break. Not only the great defense by Isaiah Hicks, but Joel Berry ran a textbook fast break, getting the defense to commit and then laying it off to Kenny Williams. Carolina is dominating this game. It's the break better than Joel Berry. He made the defense commit, took it deep into the lane, came to a jump stop, and just laid it off beautifully to Kenny Williams. And right now, you have to think that North Carolina's defense, the transition points are coming off of good defense by North Carolina. But North Carolina State can show a lot more patience than they've shown and get much better shots. They haven't really made this North Carolina defense move just yet. 
10 nothing run over the last 215 for the Tar Heels. Williams has seven points. So he's been the go to guy early for Roy Williams. The pressure on the ball by Joel Berry has been the difference in this game. Maverick Rowan, who can really shoot it, off to a boom to the left. And that did not touch a thing. And so far, Terry Henderson, who's an excellent shooter, one of the best shooters in ACC, hasn't even touched the ball yet. Jackson is wide open and absolutely dreams a three. And how about this for North Carolina? 19 to 4, and the Wolfpack is as cold as it is outside. And Mark Godfrey was looking at his team saying maybe we should have played last night. At least it would be over with. This has not gone well. Here's Henderson. And a whistle and a foul with 13.47 to go. Wolfpack 2 for 12 out of the game. Well, they haven't run their offense. And they've been moving around, but they haven't run anything. And the reason, one of the reasons North Carolina's had so many transition opportunities and put NC State's defense in a bad spot has been the North, Car North Carolina State offense. Their offense has not helped their defense at all. Britt with a foul. The cheers rising up around Smith Center because Theo Pinson is about to check in. The 6'6 junior getting a huge ovation here. His return from a right foot injury putting North Carolina at full strength for the first time this season. Theo Pinson, one of the best defenders on this North Carolina roster. Usually, if he had been playing, you would expect him to spend some time on Dennis Smith. I doubt you'll see him on him today because he hasn't been playing. But Pinson was in the mix to be a starter until hurting his foot in October. That required surgery, so he missed the Tar Heels' first 16 games and a turnover. Something that North Carolina has been doing a lot lately, 38 turnovers in their last six games, but in their last two games, I should say, but that was their first one here today. Yeah, and that was one of the ones that I think Roy Williams would drive him crazy because that was one of those careless turnovers. If there are mistakes of commission when you're really trying to do something, I don't think you have a problem with, but when it's sort of a mental mistake, that's, those are the turnovers that really bother him. Anya with another miss for the Wolfpack on that hook shot. Meeks has it up high and out of breath. Right now, North Carolina running its offense without any resistance from NC State. Beeks called for the ball in the lane. He wanted it badly there. May slamming on the brakes. Shot clock down to eight. Beeks finally does get the touch. His follow-away shot and hit. He'll go to the line as well. Going against B.J. Anya, the all-time leading shot blocker at North Carolina State in the 7-9 wingspan. Nice little fadeaway. It's one on one in the post, which is the most difficult thing to guard. They're not coming to double Kennedy Meeks, and he just fades away, and Anya just got a, just a piece of his arm and couldn't believe the call, but Kennedy Meeks certainly could. The Meeks has already made one three point play. Had a terrific game against NC State last season as Smith comes back on now with the two fouls, and Godfrey believing he cannot wait much longer. No, there's no scoring punch on the floor right now. He's got good scores on the floor while Dennis Smith was out, but NC State hasn't run its offense once in this game, not once. And short on the foul shot. Meeks coming in, averaging 13 points, just under 10 rebounds a game. Difficulty for NC State has been pressure on the ball by Joel Berry. He's really done a great job of pressuring the ball. The help side has been excellent thus far. Doran swinging it up top. Doran Doran's parents are here. They both went to North Carolina. And his brother is an outstanding freshman defensive back for the North Carolina football team. A whistle inside. Family watching today, Monday at 8. It's the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Clemson battling Alabama at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Game also streaming live on the ESPN app or watch ESPN. Tossed into the backcourt. And out it rolls back over to the Tar Heels. And they have been sloppy, the Wolfpack. Or just inbounding the ball has been a chore. And this has been an absolute nightmare for Mark, Mark Gottfried and his staff to to watch his team not not really ready for a fight. Mark said they were ready to play last night. The North Carolina administration and the ACC believe the roads were too treacherous in the area. They certainly were with a lot of ice here. May sticks it off the bench. That's something he can do the 6-8 sophomore. Uh, Luke May now healthy. He'd injured his ankle earlier this year and was slowed by that. 
Uh, he can come in and stretch the floor a bit. A good defender, solid rebounder. And he's not going to hurt you in there. There's some run here by Carolina. 17 set. Smith with the hook pass and knocked away and a reach in foul by NC State. And it's all going haywire for them here in the first half. That'll be Anya's second personal. Dennis Smith is really feeling this North Carolina defense. He's got 10 eyes on him every time he catches the ball. And help side has been excellent. It's not just been Joel Berry that's had to guard Smith. He's been guarded by all five Carolina players who are doing a really good job of corralling him. Mark was a lot happier when he went 94 feet with you a couple of hours ago. Yeah, he might like, like, like to go about 20 miles about now, but they'll keep plugging. Very up top, Pinson lifts, on clangs away, may beat everybody for the rebound. Berry again, yes, for three. And they're pouring it on right now. They are just pouring it on the work back. Offensive rebounds just kill you. You give up an offensive board, the best time by far to shoot a three-point shot in a game. Well, trying to get closer to the foul line to deny. Here's Smith again. And help side defense for North Carolina has been so alert. And he drops in a three-pointer. His first points here in the first half. There's a young man, Dennis Smith, averaging 20 points, six and a half assists. That assist total leads the ACC. That's right, he's had a 16 assist game, which is number one in D1. That one in from the corner by Joe Berry, who is 43% there, 29 to 7. You know, Dave, basketball is all about rhythm, establishing yours and disrupting theirs. And so far, North Carolina has established a great rhythm, and they have disrupted any rhythm that NC State could get into. 10.45 to go here in the first half. He goes 94 feet with Mark Gottfried. And just got him run out of time. There's a lot of them. All right, how about this? When you were in the hospital here at North Carolina, was your doctor a Carolina guy or a state guy? He was. I was just, I was hoping Roy didn't walk in with gloves on. I knew I'd be in trouble if that happened. 94 feet. <laughs> well, he does look great. He does. And I can relate to the giving up pizza thing. That is not a pleasant, uh, not a pleasant outcome. Yeah, I'm going to keep that in my diet on a regular basis as Roland backs away. What a start here for the Tar Heels. That certainly doesn't make him feel better. And it picked off by Pinson. Getting into the fray for the first time this season. Got himself a great look. Tipped by May, and he controls it. Right back up and a miss. Pinson with another effort. And a foul against NC State. North Carolina's defense has been excellent. Absolutely excellent. Mark Godfrey just got a technical foul because the foul wasn't called when Dennis Smith collided with a Carolina player there that was they would say that's incidental contact but I think he's just trying to fire his team up see if there's something he can do to get them going a little bit they are going to get Smith for his third foul they got him there's a little bit of a trip there that that's what they call the initial contact although it looked like a foul the referees would say nobody had possession there they're both going after the ball that's deemed incidental contact I know most coaches wouldn't agree with that when your guy goes down but Smith is going to have to go to the bench for the second time in the first half as Barry will shoot just about automatic at the line. What a start he has had to this game already in double figures. As much as his offense has been a contributing factor in this 31 to 7 lead, I think what's more important has been his defense. One more look at the technical foul and a hop and mad Mark Gottfried. And of course, Pinson was fouled, so he goes to the line for a one and one. And it could not be going much worse for Smith and Gottfried and the Wolfpack. He was great in 94 feet, though. I thought it was the highlight for him. That had to be worth the trip by itself. Another one tipped up and in by Tony Bradley. Look at that shooting. Just miserable for the Wolfpack. 20%, 24 degrees outside. Haven't gotten the ball inside. They haven't gotten any open looks. Oh, another air ball, too. Pinson on the run. Swings it wide openly. And the rebound tipped to control by NC State. 
Believe it or not, the Wolfpack are a very good shooting team. If you've not seen them this season, they hit 50%. They're, they're an excellent offensive team. They just haven't been able to get any rhythm because of North Carolina's pressure. That's a good three-point shooting team, and this guy is Rowan. He'll stick that one. One of the better shooters in the ACC. A terrific shooter, but look at the difficulty of the shot. A pull-up jumper with pressure on him. On the entry, Hicks spinning around. Left it short. A good job by Abu to get great pressure on that shot. North Carolina taking control of this game on what was a 20-0 run. They held NC State scores for almost six minutes, and the turnovers keep coming. And now picked off by Johnson. He'll go the other way to lay it in. Well, that's got to drive Roy Williams crazy. Isaiah Hicks did such a good job defensively and getting that ball, but you can't forget who you are when he's taking it up the court. That's not his job. Berry will fire. Not this time. Bradley over the top and commits the foul. North Carolina team that is 7-0 at home. You talk about what a terrific rebounding team they are. Leading the nation in rebounding margin and number two in rebounds per game. Well, while everybody talks about, and right, rightfully so, how the game's changed, it's become a game where big guys aren't as valuable. And North Carolina still has a trio of big guys that are the match of any front court in the country. They continue to play the same way, three round two. And they're going to get the ball inside and play inside out. They're going to dominate the glass. And their team has changed in that regard, the makeup of it. Boo to Johnson, shot clock to 10. Yurtsevin on the low block, into the lane. Way short. If you're keeping count of the air balls, that's at least four of them for the Wolfpack here in the first half. Yeah, and that's where Yurt Seven has to get a lot stronger. He's so skilled, but he's still young and needs to get a lot bigger and a lot stronger. Bradley went for the save. Back to NC State. They're coming in at 12 and 3. They bounce back from their ACC opening loss at Miami to rip Virginia Tech 104 to 78. They played a great game. They were fabulous. Shot 64% from the field. A triple double by Dennis Smith. Beyond the three, Babu trying to get closer. Johnson on the pass right through Yurtsev and shot clock down to two. Babu did not shoot it. He should have. That's a shot clock violation. They've turned it over 11 times in the first half. And the timeout was 7:39 to go. North Carolina rocking and rolling. Here at home at Chapel Hill, 33 overs per game on the season, and they've got 11 already. Give a lot of credit to the terrific pressure that Joel Berry has put on the basketball. But you know, if you're Mark Godfrey, you sit there and say, look, hey, Carolina defense is really good. It's not this good. We can't be turning the ball over at this rate. But you take a, a team with a young point guard on the road, and these kind of things happen. Uh, the issue really now is this is the hole that North Carolina State has dug for themselves. Can they dig themselves out? And with their best player riding three fouls on the bench in Dennis Smith, granted a freshman. He's swinging it up top. Here's Hicks, who's been very active on both ends of the floor and continues to be. Now, Godfrey wanted to travel, but a foul. He has a chance at a three-point play. Well, he might have moved that pivot foot, but good patience, not only by Isaiah Hicks, but by North Carolina to get the ball into the paint on both ends of the floor or both sides of the floor. They got into Kennedy Meeks, he passed to the other side of the floor, and then they immediately looked into Isaiah Hicks. That is hard to guard. And he does not miss often a 60% shooter, 77% at the line. And a Carl Malone Award watch list guy as well. He has five points. Well, he's not had his best games over the last two. He's averaging eight and a half points, five and a half rebounds. Good defense at the end. And Johnson had to adjust and threw it away. Not the best look on a shot. Woods tumbling into the lane. He takes a spill and fouled on the play. A blocking foul against the Wolfpack. 36-12 North Carolina. The official took his time to signal that. But yeah, good drive. But you needed a shot fake here. Excellent job by both 7th Woods and Isaiah Hicks to get up and pressure that shot. But this has just been one of those nightmares when you go on the road especially when you've got a lot of new pieces. This may not be a young team in age. It's young at the guard spot. But there are a lot of new pieces on this team that haven't been in this environment. And they're, they're showing it right now. So both teams were ready to play last night. 
North Carolina was going through their walkthrough when the game was postponed. NC State was miffed that they couldn't play yesterday. Any of that playing into the flat performance today? Maybe. Uh, it's hard to say. I, you know, honestly, Dave, I've never been through a postponement or a cancellation as either a player or an assistant, so it's really hard to hard to speculate on it. I'm sure that's got something to do with it, but it's not 25 points difference. Woods kept it locked. Nifty bounce speed and that fast break in high gear for the Tar Heels. Williams has had a big half of nine. The issue right now for North Carolina State. Can we run our offense once? It hasn't been run yet. It's a deep in the corner. Rowe up against Jackson who denies it. You're right about the defense for the Tar Heels. It's been superb. It's great on the ball and excellent off the ball. Excellent off the ball. And another turnover. Every shot has been contested. And once North Carolina gets a rebound, they have been off to the races. Their, their play has been beautiful to watch. So coming up on six minutes to go in the first half, a nightmare half for NC State. Jackson straight drains the triple. And this is their biggest lead of the afternoon. See, North Carolina's running their offense. That was a, a typical box set that they'd run with a slice cut and a screen for the screener. Over the handoff, Johnson almost lost his footing. Rolling out of the double team. And halftime cannot come quickly enough for NC State. Follow a shot there. That one knocked down by Terry Henderson. Coming and averaging 16 points a game, the number two scorer behind Smith, who spent most of this first half on the bench in big time foul trouble. Tip tipped again, controlled by the pack. The blue gets it to Rowan. Here's Johnson. Well, even there, North Carolina able to stop a, an advantage break by NC State and make him take a jump shot. And the Wolfpack finally making a couple of shots back to back. 43 to 16, however. When you look at this North Carolina team, David, and I, I don't think there was a team that played better in America in the month of November than North Carolina. Did. And Joel Berry got hurt. They've had a couple bumps in the road. But with Theo Pinson back and healthy, and now Joel Berry's back from that ankle injury, had some illness after that, with everybody healthy, this team's going to have something to say about who wins this whole thing. Yep. It's a reminder, this performance in the first half, that on any given day or night, they could be the best team in America. I, I absolutely agree. Now, there are a bunch of teams that, are, that have a chance to win this thing. But I think North Carolina healthy is one of them. Big smile there from Justin Jackson, who's been cool lately beyond the three-point line, but he's hitting them today. Well, he's had a great year, the leading scorer for this team, averaging over 17 a game. And his shot is so much better this year. A boom. No. Barry with the rebound. He's doing it all. What a pass. Jackson to the other side of the iron, but can't connect. Jackson was looking for the contact there instead of just thinking about finishing the play. He thought about it. Now Dorn will line one up. Got a great look. That's a two-pointer. One of the first open shots NC State's got. May racing for it. Tipped out of play by the Wolfpack. Now if that if that had been a turnover, uh, that, those are the turnovers Roy Williams could live with because they're they're really trying to do something. They're trying to get there. That, that was just one of those things. If that had wound up being off of Carolina, you wouldn't have heard a word from Roy Williams. But he doesn't like the careless ones that he's seen over the last couple of games. Yeah, he was upset about the turnovers, particularly from Joel Berry lately. But that one knocked down by Luke May. Since coming back from missing a bunch of early games, he's been a contributor. He had 11 points against Kentucky. All of those in the second half. That stands as the game of the year in college basketball so far. No question. An amazing game, 103 to 100. Yurtsev has lost the dribble. Shot clock down to 11. Still looking for a guard. A tip to the back court, but tipped off of North Carolina, so no turnover. Shot clock down to four. Johnson with a three. Yes, and they're starting to hit some shots finally. Yeah, a couple of they've seen the ball go down, and boy, everything is rushed and frenzied. Yes, again, but way short this time, and off Meeks out of play. 
So a timeout with 3.17 to go. The Tar Heels have been tremendous in the first half. On top, 48 to 21. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Applebee's Bourbon Street Chicken and Shrimp and CenturyLink. Connect that box set means they're all right here in a box. And when the big guys pop out, they run an action that's kind of a screen for the screener action. So there's a little, little screen here, slice cut to the other side, and then Kennedy Meeks, when he passes the ball, sets a screen for Justin Jackson, who was the initial screener. And they run this very well, but there's no pressure on the ball. And that allows North Carolina to just cut up this North Carolina State defense. If you can't pressure the ball and take away vision, it becomes really difficult to guard all these screening actions and, and impact the ball. Jackson with nine points. He's made three out of five outside the three. He had been just two for 14 his last couple of ACC games, so he's lighting it up today. And on the other side, Dennis Smith. We talked about him in the open. He played only seven minutes, three fouls, and he's turned it over four times. The officials have gone to the monitor to see if this was a three-point. Well, that definitely that was, was a three. It was like five feet behind it. What I want to know is what were what, what they doing during the timeout? Why are they doing it now? Yes. Get a chance to be on TV. How do you feel about this, Dave? Because there was, there was a really interesting thing that Brian Gubble had on, on Real Sports in a roundtable session talking about replay ruining sports. And you know what? I, I tend to do agree with him after I heard it that these things take so long now in football, basketball, baseball, that it's affecting uh, your experience as a viewer it's certainly expecting it uh, uh, affecting it inside the arena mm -hmm. I thought there were a lot of fair points there that have caused me to look at this different I agree with both of you and and particularly when it comes to watching football games right it has just slowed down to a crawl any momentum that football can bring and for me part of the, the thrill of watching a football game when an offensive team particularly really gets rolling Boy, the, the timeouts, because of official review, just bog it down endlessly. And in basketball, it is taking way too long. And it's uh, it's kind of a, it's gotten to the point of absurdity. Like, look, I think you want to get it right. I'm not arguing that. You want to get it right. But at what cost? And if it's going to take this long in a game that you want to have flow and up and down and all that, uh, I think we maybe we need to rethink it. I, I don't know. I, it was just an interesting point that really, really piqued my interest. Gets him on the low block. Good reach in there by Berry to knock that one free. And they did call a tie up on the play. The possession arrow belongs to North Carolina. Great job there by Berry as the defense continues to be a star for the Tar Heels. Look how many white shirts were diving on that ball. And the only one on the floor in red was Omer Yurtsev. Now that's not necessarily a knock on, on NC State, but it's a question of, of alertness and, and urgency. And North Carolina's got it right now, and North Carolina State does not. Ritz the open shooter, around and out there. But they haven't missed many open looks like that. Johnson trying to push the tempo. Tossed it behind, could beat up, and that won't roll in. Wins it back. Another record. He got two cracks at it. Denied by North Carolina. Here's May. For three. Well, when Luke May comes into the game and can stretch the floor, he's already hit a couple of jumpers, grabbed a couple of rebounds. He's had, a, and he's done a really good job in his help side defense. He has had an excellent game. And his dad, Mark May, was a quarterback here in North Carolina. And he's, I was told yesterday he's got three brothers about his size. <laughs> and one of the one of the Carolina assistants had mentioned to me, you should see those guys eat. <laughs> <laughs> you should see mom shot. 6'8", the sophomore. And a foul on the play will go against May. And that'll put Dorn at the line. We talked about his folks who are here today. Mom and dad, both North Carolina alums. His brother, a defensive back on the North Carolina football team. Got a start in the bowl game as well. Doran. Family matters, it says on the cap. Torin Doran is a really good player. He started out his career at UNC Charlotte. He was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year in 2015, transferred to North Carolina State. One of the best guard rebounders, not only in the ACC, but in the country. He's been affected a little bit, his role by the return of Maverick Rowan, so he's not gotten as many shots of late, still trying to figure it out, but he's really good. Foul here will go against North Carolina. 
Torrance Senior, by the way, also played in North Carolina and then had a career in the NFL for about six years. So, Tire Heel blew very much in the family. Mom's a, a 90 graduate, dad a 89 graduate, but mom is much younger. She was very, so smart that she jumped way ahead. Yes. They always are. 142 to go here in the first half and a whistle to stop the clock 51 to 23 North Carolina impressive is an understatement as Barry picks up his first North Carolina averaging 88 points a game but NC State 85 points a game figure they would run with the Tar Heels today Henderson off target here at yanking down the rebound Dorn on the spin Anytime you spin not worry about upside defense and Theo Pinson was right there to sit on that spin. Uh, Dorn with a little bit of a mishandle but got it back. He'll take it himself and draw a foul. Dorn Dorn to the line where he hits 76 percent. For most players anytime you execute a spin move in traffic it's going to be a turnover. So Dorn will be at the line. We transferred from UNC Charlotte sat out last year. But as a rookie, he was named Conference USA Freshman of the Year. He averaged 12 points a game. And around and out of that one. 119 to go in the half. And Mark Godfrey can't wait to get his team inside that locker room and try and start this thing over again. But going to be in a gigantic hole. And his number one player, the freshman sensation Smith, in foul trouble with three. North Carolina State getting out in passing lanes now. Their defense a lot more active than it was early on. They were knocked back early. And on the back down, Bradley will pick up the foul. Tony Bradley, the 6'11 freshman, got another Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPN. We started the SEC, Malik Funk and number six, Kentucky, battling Bandy at seven and at nine. Inside the Big Ten, Indiana and Maryland. Both teams also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Right, Kentucky is really starting to come on. That, that team has been really good from the first day, but they're starting to figure it out. The one thing they don't do as a team is, is shoot a great percentage from the perimeter. And Malik Monk does, Derek Willis, but they don't have a, a long line of, of really good shooters like some other teams do. But Boy, they are as explosive as anyone I can remember in the open court. Robinson into the game, and the freshman will stick that one. So everyone's hitting shots here in the first half of the Tar Heels. Well, they're doing it with, in a comfort zone, and that's really going to be an issue for North Carolina State. Can they make North Carolina uncomfortable? North Carolina on their way to another 100-point game. That's going to be a blocking foul. Against the Tar Heels with 21 seconds to go. There was a 20 to nothing run early in the first half for North Carolina to put a stranglehold on this game. Mark Gottfried has been teed up. He wanted that one. I think he just wanted to see if he could light some sort of fire. Going at the line, but around and out. North Carolina has had nine different players hit the scoring column. It's got to be hard for Torn Doran's parents to come here wearing red. I mean, I know blood is thicker than water, but it's got to be a little bit of a, I had to give it a little twin. Yeah, maybe more than a little. But they're supporting their son here today. And their son is really good, man. I'm really impressed with Torn Doran. It's 49% from the three-point line. Let's take a ton of them, but he hits them. But North Carolina has hit everything in sight. Way downtown, Jackson. Yes, another tucker. What a way to end the half. If you just joined us for that shot, that's how the first 20 minutes went for the Tar Heels. North Carolina's done it at both ends of the floor. Uh, 33 points, that lead for the Tar Heels. Jay Billis and Dave O'Brien with it. That ties the season high for first half lead. Carolina did about everything right. And how about one assist in the first half for the Wolfpack? One assist, and that shows you how, how difficult it was for North Carolina State to run their offense in the first half, in large measure because of North Carolina's defense. The Tar Heels did a great job 
of putting pressure on the ball. Their help side defense was really alert. They were active. They were moving. All five guys were seeing the ball and moving as the ball moves. Now, did that excuse every turnover and every mistake for North Carolina, uh, North Carolina State? Of course not. You know, this is the NC State is far better than they showed in the first half. Now, they would have been down almost no matter what for this Carolina team with the way the Tar Heels are playing. But I think winning the game may not be an issue when you spot Carolina 33 points in the Smith Center. You're not worried about winning the game in the second half. It's just punching back. I think the key is for NC State, can we play like we know we're capable of playing? Uh, because this thing got away from them in the first half. They want to see in the second half, can we play like ourselves and try to salvage something out of this trip to, to Chapel Hill? Well, as you said, the Wolfpack got hit. They got hit right in the mouth and hard. A 20 to nothing run by North Carolina, and they did not respond. We'll see how it works out in the second half. That one tipped by Williams to the backcourt. He races for it, but NC State will have it. And a terrific hustle we have seen from the Tar Heels defensively continues. Well, Kenny Williams, one of the better defensive guards on this Carolina team, and not giving up on any play. When you're up 33, you, know, you might want your guys to dial it down a little bit. Not North Carolina. They want their guys to play 100% all the time. But when you're on the floor, there's no such thing as garbage time. So here's Dennis Smith, spent most of the first half on the bench with three fouls. One of the great freshmen in the country, averaging 20 points a game. Trying to get that one up in time, and that's a shot clock violation. And the D continues to buckle down against Gottfried's team. In the first half, Jackson had 12, tied with Joel Berry for the team lead for North Carolina. Jackson hitting a long three right at the end of the first half and they went crazy again here at the Smith Center and here he is wide open from the wing again but not this time Meeks with a rebound the stick back second effort by Hicks won't go NC State going with a little two three zone it gives a one three one look when you're coming down the floor and then after the per first pass goes to a two three and they'll match up out of it so rebounding is going to be an issue as long as NC State's in that defense Flings away by Smith Number five scorer in the ACC he is Barry lining one up. That one glances off the iron. Those are quick shots, but North Carolina wants a lot of possessions. That was a, a, an open three in transition. Right, Henderson just lost it. That one's spinning off his fingertips, and they've turned it over 17 times. Just a remarkable number. And just four for North Carolina. And this is a team, remember, that blew out Virginia Tech the other day in a 104-point performance where they shot 64%. What a dish and the finish. But that's Jackson with an outstanding pass. So this is a very good interior screening team. And against zones, North Carolina does a great job of overloading the zone, screening the zone, and finding openings. This is a Wolfpack team not afraid to run with you. They scored 94 points against number 20 Creighton. They lost that game. You're to the inside for two. As you mentioned, a game against Virginia Tech, and they've been in the 90s three other times. They average 85 points a game, but point today, just not making shots, and they've been denied so many times. Here's Meeks. He has two more. Well, that's an issue of alertness on defense, having your hands up when the when the ball is out above the top of the key. You shouldn't be able to throw it on a straight line on a rope right down under the basket without somebody from NC State getting a finger on it deflecting it. A move with a nice feathery touch there. The 6'8 junior who has four double doubles this season, 20 in his career. His six points so far today, however. NC State does a lot of nice actions there where they'll have the point guard set a ball screen at the elbow. They run a lot of action off the elbow. And North Carolina has basically taken all of that away. Wide open. Jackson again. Maybe a little too wide open, but Meeks with a second effort. Here's Williams for three. North Carolina a little bit cold shooting in the second half, but they're getting basically any shot that they want. Smith trying to penetrate, got the pass free. The jumper will go in on a line drive. That's a three-pointer by Torin Dorn, who makes 49% outside the three-point line. Very right back in with a scoop shot. Just as soon as you score, North Carolina is running it right up your back. 
and getting all the way to the rim. That puts a ton of pressure on your transition defense. Can't jog back against the Tar Heels, make or miss. Yeah, very much like Kentucky in that regard. And of course, those two played to 103 to 100. Well, as fast as Carolina is in the passing ahead, getting the ball up court after a make or a miss, I think Kentucky's actually faster. Yeah, I would agree. Kentucky's that I can't remember a team that got the ball up court as quickly as, as Kentucky does. And those will be a travel and hitch, by the way. Those two guards, De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk, they're, they're absolutely ridiculous with their speed and athleticism. I've not seen a quicker guard than Fox this season, and I've not seen anyone who's able to stay in front of him. Right. And, and I've not seen anybody faster with the ball. That you, you put him with the, you know, if you had to have a 100-yard dash dribbling, he'd win it. Like, he'd be, he'd be world champion every time. That'll swish in by Henderson, the 6'5 senior. He's a Raleigh, North Carolina product. Only four points, though. He's really been silenced today. Came in averaging 16. Yeah, North Carolina State hasn't been able to run anything. He's not going to get it on his own. He's going to be coming off of screens and off of action in the offense. And he transferred in to NC State from West Virginia that first last year. But he's fourth in the league in three-point shooting. Jackson to the paint, and a collision. He'll draw the foul. That was with eight on the shot clock. That's a long wait for North Carolina by their standards before they get off a shot. That was on B.J. Anya? That was. That's just, his third. Just for being bigger? <laughs> 320 pounds at 6'9". He's bigger than everybody. Every screen he sets is a double screen. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college. Really remarkable. The one that had your jaw on the floor was Georgia Tech beating North Carolina. I still can't believe that happened. Uh, Georgia Tech, Josh Pastner's done a really good job trying to rebuild that program, but he doesn't have players right now. And they went into Duke on Wednesday, got beat by 50-some points. And I, I, would, I would not be surprised to see them with only two or three wins by the end of the year in conference play, because this conference is ridiculously difficult this year. Look, 13 of the ACC's teams are ranked in the top 50 of the KenPom.com uh, rankings, which is absurd. I mean, the, the depth of quality in this league is ridiculous. There's some great matchups coming up inside the ACC next weekend and uh, many weekends to come. 63-34, North Carolina ranked number 14. Many believe it should be a lot higher than that. Hicks with a tough angle shot. Got the miss, went for the stuff. Here he is again, and finally gets it to go. Well, how about the second and third effort? Give credit there to Kennedy Meeks for keeping that first offensive rebound alive so that Isaiah Hicks could get it. And that's why North Carolina, one of the many reasons North Carolina is so tough is their ability to get second shot after second shot. And Smith off the screen. That one missed ugly. He jumped out and tipped that one away. A nice defensive play. Rowan from three, sticks it. Well, how about that defensive play by... Dennis Smith, he has been struggling like crazy at both ends of the floor. And right around midcourt, just times his jump to deflect that pass. That was a, a, incredible. He's had some great scoring games this season. 30 against Loyola, had 27 against Virginia Tech. Uh, tipped up 14-11 to go here in the second half. Watch this play by Dennis Smith. Not just the athleticism that it took, but the timing. To time this out and get a finger on that and essentially create that steal that Terry Henderson was able to get. Well, here he tips one all the way to the baseline and saved it. Trying to go up strong and does. North Carolina State has shown some real fight in this second half. Shooting a much better percentage, but they're also coming out swinging. That's what Mark Godfrey wanted to see. And you're right, Jay. They're making shots. He made 7 out of 10. Hicks is the open man for the stuff goal. A more good interior screen by North Carolina. Isaiah Hicks with 11. So approaching his season average of 12. 67 to 39, Tar Heels. Isaiah Hicks playing hard even though he just had his number retired in high school. On Wednesday night in Oxford, North Carolina. Anya, tough to stop that when he wants that shot. He has his first bucket. How do you stop that? It's like stopping a truck just rolling downhill. Now you mentioned the all-time leader in block shots at NC State as he passed Thurl Bailey in March. Thurl, of course, leading Jimmy B's miracle 1983 team. The Wolfpack to the national championship. He led the team in scoring and rebounding. 
Earl Bailey was a great player, a great guy. Smith has it stripped. And on numbers, Barry with a handoff for Jackson. Left it short. Rowan battling for the rebound. And another collision on the deck. And it's going to stay on this end for North Carolina. Dennis Smith, the 6'3 freshman, certainly has not been his day. But he's had a tremendous freshman season. ESPN Top 100, ranked fourth overall, in fact. He tore his ACL in August of his senior year in high school, but before that as a junior, he was the North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. And while he was sitting out last year, you know, he enrolled in NC State, I think, middle of the year. And he wasn't able to practice with the team, but he was around uh, for the entire second semester. So he was able to get his feet wet as a, as a college kid. And then when Anthony Cat Barber, who was the ACC's leading scorer last year, when he decided to go pro, uh, it didn't bother Mark Godfrey too bad because he knew what he had waiting in the wings, and that was Dennis Smith, who he may not be around all that long, but while he's here, he's going to do some, some great things. This hasn't been his day, but it has been his year. He's played some really good basketball. Very oh, so sweet from three to give him 17. What guard in America, maybe Frank Mason at Kansas, but what guard in America has had a more profound impact on his team than Joel Berry's had in North Carolina this year? Today, staying away from turnovers, which have lately plagued him a little bit. Anya working on Meeks. Two big bodies. It spits free. Barry now on the attack. He'll lay it up and in. Five on one. But wide open Anya for the slam. So Carolina paid for it there. Well, that was one where when you were. On one hand, impressed that everybody ran. On the other hand, saying, hey, there's no defensive balance here. Meeks bouncing inside, and he'll draw the whistle. He gets hit with 11.43 to go. Joel Berry has been as good as any guard in the country, and he's done it at both ends of the floor. He is clearly the most important player on this North Carolina team, and that has been evident in this blowout of NC State today. How to go live when such a dynamic guard, but excellent defensively, has improved his shooting immeasurably from last year to this. Right? His first couple of years at Carolina, he was a guy when he launched up a three-point shot. As an opponent, you might not have been too worried about it. Now, you had better get on him. And he does a great job of running the break, running the team. He's really the heart and soul of this North Carolina team. On the Bob Cousy Award watch list for the top point guard in America as Meeks frames the first one. Had a chance to meet Bob Cousy several weeks ago. The absolute epitome of class. Mm -hmm. And I was a little blown away. I mean, it, you know, we get to meet a lot of people in this business, but I was more than a little blown away. Well, especially when you meet some of those old Celtics that were you know, so dominant in their time. I mean, you get a chance to meet Bill Russell, who's won 11 NBA championships. Just 11. Incredible. It's ridiculous. And he was, Bill Russell was like a high jump champion when he was in high school. Is that right? Yeah, jumped on. I think at one point he held the world record in the high jump. I had no idea. World record for rings, that's for sure. I'm, I'm full of useless trivia, whether it's true or not. <laughs> Meeks with a misfire, May in close, working hard, and draws the foul. He's had a really fine day. What a really nice job by Luke May to go to the other side of the basket where B.J. Anya was behind him. So able to shield off one shot block and get into another one. Anya, yeah, Anya with a foul. And Anya was standing around, didn't get right back into the fray. But he has some arms, the length of which are hard to describe. Wingspan, I, I start getting lightheaded when I think about his wingspan. What did you say that wingspan was? 7'9". 7'9", on Anya. I haven't confirmed that myself. ESPN News confirming. <laughs> he is now on the bench, though, with four fouls. Rowan trying to take the baseline. A lean-in shot for two. Really good drive by Maverick Rowan. Maybe the closeout by Theo Pinson, not quite as sharp as it would be if he had been playing. It's nice to see him back. He, as he gets back into rhythm, 
and back into basketball shape. He's going to make a huge difference for this North Carolina team. Yeah, missed a bunch of games because of concussive symptoms after the season opener in November, but healthy now. And another whistle, 10.42 to go, and they'll get Yurtsevin with his third foul. First take is now on ESPN. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, Stephen A. Max and Molly discuss and debate the most compelling and entertaining topics in the sports world on ESPN. Now, is Stephen A. just taller, or is he being put out front of everybody there in that promo picture? I think he asked to be put out front there and stand on a, a high riser. And when I do an open with you, I often ask the same thing, and you shoot that down time and again. See, I hate it when our producers want us to get our chairs. You know, they want my chair to go down so that we're at the same height. But right. It makes everybody think that, you know, I'm not worthy of being drafted or something. I'm some little guy. Right. Who are we fooling? Exactly. It's a seven-footer rolling again. Oh. Big rebound by Abu, who has pretty good hops. 10.21 to go here in the second half. NC State just trying to cut in. It was an absolutely miserable first half for the Wolfpack. A great first 20 minutes for North Carolina. May with another rebound. And NC State runs, uh, is running much better offense in the second half. They can say, well, Carolina's not guarding like they did, but they're still playing good defense. North Carolina with a turnover. They've been doing that a lot the previous couple of games. They have eight in this one, so that's really slowed down. Ms. Rowan again, who can really shoot the long one. Kind of a Scott Wood type player for NC State because he can stretch the floor and he's not afraid of anything. The, the key is to work to get more open shots. Brent will knock that one in for a triple. His first three. He's been struggling from the field of late. He's 12 of his last 46 from the field coming into this game. He had a really good game, played really well at Georgia Tech, one of the the lone bright, uh, bright spots for North Carolina in Atlanta. Abu working on May. Drops that shoulder, went for the bank and missed it. Here's with an off the fake. Can't stick it. Second effort, taken away. And now stolen right back by NC State. Johnson, Rowan. They give it away again. Here comes Woods. Oh, nice feed and Brent connects. Where they can really run that fast break as well as just about anybody in the country. And North Carolina State in, in this game has not been able to sustain sort of multiple actions and the play after the play. But they're far better than they've shown. North Carolina's the reason for it, but this, this state team is much better than they have shown. Foul against NC State with 8.32 to go. Quick moving second half. Yurtsevin with his fourth. Now, the North Carolina schedule coming up at Wake Forest on Wednesday. That's on ESPN2. That Florida State team is going to be very, very tough to handle. Yeah, none of these games are going to be easy because Wake Forest is a, a much improved team. John Collins, one of the best big guys in the league. But Florida State presents a really unique challenge. They're, they're super athletic. Uh, they are much better offensively than they have been. You, in past years, you would say Florida State, boy, their defense is going to be a real challenge, but they might struggle to score. They do not struggle to score. Dwayne Bacon has proven to be one of the best players in the country. They've got one of the best freshmen in the country, and Jonathan Isaac. Xavier McCann Mays is a guy who's gotten over 40 in a game. They, they are they are really, really good. Yeah, they're a fun team to watch. Jackson from the corner. Yep, they will knock down another three point. How good has he been this year? And in this game with 16, he's made five out of his 10 triples. He had 34 against Kentucky, 21 in the game against Indiana. He's been very, very consistent, not only with his effort, but with his productivity. On the run, they forgot about Bradley, missed the dunk. Laid up and in by Jackson. Tony Bradley, the 6'11 freshman, with a miss in close, but it's 87 to 48. And that lead balloons again for the Tar Heels. Johnson, way too strong. Seventh Woods did a great job of putting pressure on that shot. That's where you got a shot fake and drive. And they keep losing Jackson. He keeps making a pair with three pointers. He's been wide open. 21 for him. There's a wooden award candidate. He's playing like one today. 21 points for the junior from Texas. 
Justin Jackson, their number one scorer, averaging 17. He's way past that already today. He has scored the last eight for the Tar Heels. Hey, Mike. We need some downtime for maintenance. Do you see this? Morning. In Carolina Blue, have really shined today. Boy, North Carolina's gotten it from just about every position, but none have been more effective than Joel Berry and Justin Jackson combining for 40 points, nine rebounds, seven assists, and Dennis Smith, the fabulous freshman from North Carolina State, has had one of his tougher outings of the season. And when your best player struggles like this, it's hard to imagine you can get a win in this environment. It was two for seven. Carrying a lot of foul trouble today, three fouls in the first half, and we didn't see a whole lot of them. Bradley, tough angle shot, draws the foul. Tony Bradley, the freshman from Florida, son of a minister. He was the state of Florida's Mr. Basketball's high school senior. He'll be at the line when we come back for the Tar Heels. I need to promote my new business and do it on budget. I can make that happen. Business cards? Business cards, brochures, banners. Pens? Pens, magnets, luggage tags. As well, you're going to be working with Bill Walton. Well, he's going to be working with me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's great. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Monday I, at 8. I tried to get into the fine bomb film room, but they only wanted one bald guy in there at a time, so I couldn't get in. Yes, that's the limit. So it should be a dandy last season, 45-40, Alabama. As the tide rolled to another national championship, Bradley at the line here, where he makes 63%. I wonder if Post Scarborough is going to be able to get the kind of yardage and carries that he got against Washington when they play Clemson. Post Scar wasn't Bo Scarborough part of the mean machine in the longest yard? No, no. No, no. Well, Scarborough is right. Was it Nate? Nate Scarborough. Nate That's Scarborough. Right. Nate Scarborough. Still a, a vastly underrated film. Great movie. Eddie Albert was outstanding in that, as he was in Green Acres. Rolling up high on the wing. Under seven minutes left. Snatched away by Nate Britt. Defense has been sensational today for North Carolina. And a little shove there on the baseline. 6.47 to go. Yeah, Luke May has had some really good games this season once he got healthy for North Carolina. He had 11 points against Kentucky at 10 in a really good game against Davidson. But th this has been his best game. He's done a really good job out there. And that ankle sprain, he missed a bunch of games early in the season. Really been crashing the glass, the 6'8 sophomore. Bradley will be at the line again. Warren Dorn into the game, not to be confused with Roger Dorn, the third baseman for Major League, now that we've gotten out of movies. Expect me to die for it? <laughs> Bradley sings the first one. In, in both of those cases, I mean, the first film was really good. Great. I mean, good to great, and, and this, the follow-ups were just terrible. Yeah, that's, uh, that's usually the case. Right? Except for The Godfather, most sequels have not lived up to what you would expect. And, and I guess all the sequels of, of the Star Wars. Not trilogy. What, what, is he, what is, like, ten, what do you say, anthology? Yes. Well, I would say Godfather 2 is right there with Godfather yes. 1. Might have even been better. Might have even been better. Here's Dorn. Trying to bounce it down low for a boo. Wanted that lane, knocked away again. Good hustle by Britt. Comes straight to Simmons. Woods! Block, Bradley finishes it. What an athletic play by Seventh Woods. That was full speed from a guy with speed. Harold, the freshman from South Carolina. That was absolutely spectacular. And then three Carolina players right there to clean it up. Been that way all day, hasn't it? The catch by May over the shoulder. Bradley crashing the glass hard and deflected out of play. North Carolina will keep it. Watch this play by the freshman, Seventh Woods. Picks this ball up full speed behind the back and then goes up off the glass before it's blocked off. What a fabulous play. And North Carolina has been... First to the floor on just about every possession where there's been a loose ball. Been that way since the opening minute. Bradley for two more. And they're approaching 100 points. Now the most they have ever scored in this series against NC State is 104. 
Well, that's going to be broken today. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people may be thinking, well, why doesn't Roy Williams put the walk-ons in? And it's too early for that. And the other part of it is he needs to get some of these guys some minutes. You know, they've worked hard to be able to play. They got to play. And they keep digging. NC State down the other end. This, by the way, the 231st meeting in the series. And it looks like it's going to be a record-setting day. A timeout by Mark Godfrey trying to slow down this freight train. I did not anticipate this. North Carolina has been spectacular. NC State, this is as poorly as the Wolfpack have played all year. But this is a much better team, North Carolina State, than the score indicates. They, they can play, and, and they haven't played today. They really have not, and North Carolina, their credit really has. This is a 22 to nothing run. NC State heading to Boston College, then Georgia Tech, Pitt, Wake Forest, then they're at Duke on the 23rd on ESPN. That brings up the question of Grayson Allen again. Now, I know there was a lot of chatter last night, a lot of conversation about what was perceived by some as yet another tripping incident or an attempt at a trip. I'm not sure I'm buying that at all based on what I saw last night, but it continues to be one of the strangest things, it, not only in, in college basketball, but in sports, that, I mean, it, it continues to happen with him, and he has lost any benefit of the doubt. Yes, uh, you know, and look, nothing happened in that game against Boston College, irrespective of what people are trying to say, what his intent was, he's falling forward, going to, into a screen, all that stuff. It doesn't really matter because nobody got tripped. Right. So nothing happened there, and there, there's nothing to worry about in that regard. But if it were to have been one of those type incidents where, where like, it, like when uh, earlier in the game, when Dennis Smith was called for a tripping foul, there's nothing to that. That's no big deal. That happens in basketball. If it happens with Grayson Allen, it's going to be second guess forever. And to be fair, he earned that. You know, that, that's that's coming his way, whether he likes it or not. The foul the, here is Dorn misfires. The one of the interesting things to me was yesterday, uh, Dylan Brooks of Oregon was in a situation where he got he was you know, sort of knocked to the floor and his leg was being bent back then he kicked up and and caught Josh Hawkinson from Washington State in the groin uh, certainly not a pleasant situation for Josh Hawkinson but he was ejected from the game for that and people a lot of people on Twitter other places saying hey you know how do you compare this to, to the Grace Allen thing with Dylan Brooks it happened once if it happens again, it was dealt with by the officials. If it happens again, then we'll deal with it. Uh, but I don't think I don't think you go immediately to compare it to Grayson Allen uh, right away. It's a one-time deal. Anya inside. We'll get him with 428 left, and a big fella from Washington D.C. will be at the line as Bailey Bradley fouls him. And let's give you a look at the notable upcoming ACC games inside the ACC. Of course, you've got Duke and Louisville coming up on Saturday at noon. That has a chance to be a great game. Louisville got a win yesterday against Georgia Tech and had a difficult time getting into Atlanta. My understanding was they had to they had to get some space cleared by UPS at their facility. Otherwise, they weren't they wouldn't have been allowed to land uh, at Atlanta's airport. Everybody needs a little bit of help in this weather and really nasty weather here in North Carolina last night, causing the postponement of this game until one o'clock today. No, the Wolfpack very much wanted to play yesterday. Straight on jump shot. That one knocked in by Woods, who's really shown up here in the second half. Seventh Woods is a great athlete. That is the area where he needs to improve most is his shooting. And shot that with uh, with really good rhythm and had a good stroke. And his shooting stroke is better from three than it is from like 12 to 15 feet. He's got a little hitch in it. They're in a situation where they have to do that, and they're able to do it year after year. They've done it again this season. On back to the 13-14 season. And 15-16, it was Page and Johnson. And turning that page to this season. Hansborough, one of the many alums in the crowd here today. Tyler Hansborough's here, Rashid Wallace. Boy, and you, you showed the Harrison Barnes and Kendall Marshall from that 2012 team. If Kendall Marshall hadn't been hurt in the NCAA tournament, I think it was against Creighton, he, he hurt, his, uh, hurt his hand. I would have loved to have seen North Carolina take on Kentucky in that tournament. I think that would have been a, 
close to a toss-up game. That was the Kentucky team that Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist that won the national championship. Was North Carolina coming off a national championship heartbreaking performance in the loss to Villanova on the three at the buzzer. And Roy Williams has gone to his bench. He has the walk-ons in now. We had a little over three minutes to go here. And what has been a walk away from the Wolfpack. There was a 20 to nothing run early in the first half. And where the Tar Heels really put a stranglehold on the thing. They've had a 22 to nothing run here in the last several minutes to get beyond 100 points. And to their credit, North Carolina played hard and together and focused throughout this whole game. They haven't taken a play off. Stolen away by Smith, who he thought would be a big story as he knocks down a three-pointer. And he was a big story, but for the wrong reason in the first half because of the three fouls. Well, anytime you rely on freshmen, you're going to have this kind of outing. So North Carolina about to improve to 14 and 3 and 2 and 1 in the ACC. The Wolfpack will try and pick up the pieces on what was an off day all the way around for NC State. They're going to drop to 12 and 4 and 1 and 2 in the ACC. Jay Rush out on the floor for North Carolina's uncle Brandon Rush, former Kansas star, is going to have his jersey retired at Kansas. Woods with the theft. Oh, he goes down hard, taken down hard by BJ Anya. There's nothing wrong with that. It was just a hard play. Just a just a hard foul. There's nothing wrong with that foul. He went up after the ball. Nothing wrong with that. On you fouling up, by the way, that's number five. And Woods will be at the line to shoot a pair with 227 left. And a big fella to the bench. Woods has been playing about 10 minutes a game. Freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. He was named after a Bible verse, Seventh Woods. Well, coming up on a Super Tuesday, Kentucky and Vanderbilt inside the SEC, presented by CenturyLink. And then at 9 o'clock, it's off to the Big Ten, number 25, Indiana, taking on Maryland. Indiana bounced back yesterday to beat Illinois. James Blackman had a great game in that one. That was a that was a mental health win for the Hoosiers as much as anything after dropping three in a row. They knocked off North Carolina in Bloomington in what I think is the most raucous environment we've seen in college basketball so far this season. Assembly Hall is one of the coolest places uh, in, in basketball. We're one of the coolest places in sports. Absolutely. Certainly. For some reason, basketball arenas are kind of like baseball stadiums to me, or even golf courses. Like they're all in college, they're all so different and just so cool. And as as great as as the Smith Center is here in North Carolina, uh, I think some of the older folks like me would would tell you, you know what, Carmichael's probably even better. That little stick. Possession arrow is going to keep it on this end with 147 to go. Now the key is who goes up and gets it. Yeah. Every time that happened, Bill Rafter used to say, Mick Ball, we led the nation in that. 102 56. And again, the all time record for North Carolina in the series is 104 points. So very much within reach here. But that's on the line by Robinson and turned back over to the Wolfpack. So North Carolina with some terrific numbers in this one, obviously. Yeah, for NC State, this is just one to learn from. There are gonna there are a lot of games left in conference play. We're gonna have a lot of a lot of difficult situations you're gonna have to work through. Robinson, one of the freshmen, lighting up the bench. On uh, that stop, so they get to 104. One of, the, one of the things this shows, Dave, is how hard it is. This can get away from you in a hurry. And you, it's not just enough to come ready to play. You have to come ready to fight. And I'll tell you, I hope Stillman White's okay there. But I'll tell you, th this, is, this happens at every level of basketball. When you, and people are getting upset over it. 
nothing was wrong here. It is incumbent upon the offensive player here to go in there and go off a two feet. When you go off a of one foot there, you cannot protect yourself, and you are at the mercy of the defense. When you go off a of two feet, one, you can shot fake and let the defense fly by. But the other thing is you can go up with a chance to complete the play. And unless you're way ahead of the play, going off a of one foot puts you in a vulnerable position. White still shaking off the pain in that arm, but if he can make this foul shot, it'll be a record in this series for points against NC State, and he gets it. There's number 105. Stoneman White was recruited when Larry Drew left early to go to uh, to transfer, not left early, transferred to UCLA. And then Stoneman White went on a, a two-year Mormon mission, so he's 24 years old. He's come into a couple games this year when Carolina was struggling, really was a I don't want to say a calming influence, but he made some really good, solid plays. A good player. He commits the foul. 59 seconds left. On a blow by is Johnson. Can't lay it in. And now North Carolina looking to run. And Markel Johnson's had a tough day for NC State, but he's going to be very good. Really explosive and athletic. Robinson switches in two more. A huge scoring day for the Tar Heels against their state rival, who never did recover after getting punched hard in the first half. And NC State losing their young star to foul trouble, Dennis Smith, that he had to sit for long stretches of that first half. And it made a gigantic difference in the outcome of this one, but North Carolina really had the offense going. Their defense was outstanding. I thought that was really the difference early, Dave. North Carolina's defense was so good on the ball and help side five were playing as one for the Tar Heels on the defensive end 107 points for Roy Williams and his North Carolina Tar Heels the record in this long series against NC State 107 56 for my partner Jay Billis I'm Dave O'Brien thanks so much for joining us today here at Chapel Hill EBA Bowling USA against the world is coming